Greetings, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I'm losing my mind in lockup. All right, so today we're going to do part two of my 2020 pickups. As I move, as the year moves along, I'll just kind of periodically do these videos of what I've been purchasing this year. Um, again, like last time, you know, we're still you know, in lockup, whatever the hell you want to call it, uh, and uh, can't really go to record stores. I know across the country there are some that are kind of opening up. You're able to kind of go in for as long as you're wearing a mask. Some of them, uh, you know, are kind of have, like, occupancy limits. You know, we can have, you know, 10 people in the store at a time or what have you. So it's nice to see that some places are kind of, some of these record stores are enabled to have, uh, some customers come in, but, uh, you know, for the most part, things are still kind of locked up. So anyways, here we go. Enough of that. Here's what else I picked up this year. First up, Albert Hammond Jr., yours to keep. This is from 2000, what, eight, I think. 2008, 2006, I think. You know him from the Strokes, Albert Hammond Jr. His father had a couple of big hits back in the day. First thing I ever heard from it years ago uh, was 101. I really liked that song. And I don't know why I just never went any deeper than that. I never went thought to pick up the record or anything like that. I just kind of let that be. I had that song on my uh, iPod and would listen to it a lot. And just, I don't know, I just never thought to grab the record. And then this year I finally, I think I heard another song in a movie called In Transit, not the movie, the song is called In Transit, but I saw it in a movie. And when I like, I think I used Shazam, like, what is that? And it came up Albert Hammond Jr. from this album that the 101's on. And I was like, oh shoot, you know, and that, that kind of like sealed it for me. I was like, let me, let me dig up that. Could have put all this into like a Strokes record, but I, I guess maybe this just doesn't really fit with the Strokes band, that's why it needed to be a solo thing, you know how that goes, but uh, good good record, yours to keep, Albert Hammond Jr., one of my favorite bands, the Go Team, Semi Circle, this came out in 2019, I think, 2019, 2017, oh geez, this is older than I thought, wow, 2017, huh, um, good record, uh, really good band, electronica kind of sounding. Uh, they always kind of put out some really cool, cool music. I, I really like this. I mean, you know, I've been listening to a lot of this stuff, uh, just like having on in the background that I, I like. I can't even look at like the track listing and say, oh, you know, yeah, you should listen to this song or you should listen to that song. I don't know what the song titles are because I just have them in the background. I'm just like digging the music that I haven't really kind of gone the extra step and gone like, well, what is the name of this song, by the way, you know? Um, but a uh, good record, you know, I always kind of dig the stuff they're putting out. Go Team, Semi, Circle. Still, still can't believe this came out in 2017. Could have sworn this came out last year. That's crazy. Time is flying. Time is flying. Next up we have Ice House, Measure for Measure. This is, I guess, the U.S. version of this album, the cover. There's a different cover, I guess, internationally, or they're from Australia. I imagine down there had the different cover. This came out in 86. Uh, first introduction to this band was in 86. I had the cassette of this back then. Uh, no Promises was the song getting a lot of radio airplay at the time, and as well as Cross the Border, which I think was the song that really kind of sold me on the band. They're kind of, you know, new wave and pop you know, kind of alternative rock, you know, um, good band. They were around for a while. They, the record after this, I think it was called Man of Colors. That one kind of gave them some bigger success here in the United States. And then they kind of just faded back away. But, uh, but I like this record a lot. I remember picking it up back in the day and listening to it quite a bit. I think I got this on Discogs. Um, and, uh, you know, just one of those, I, was, I lately I've th just been thinking of like albums from, you know, the, my past or bands that I like that I haven't really dug anything else up by them. I just have like maybe that one record by them. So I've just kind of been looking 
around for other things like that to maybe add to the collection. And that's how this ended up in my possession, you know, just something I had when I was younger that I liked and didn't have a copy of it anymore, really. So uh, I decided to pick it up on CD, Ice House, Measure for Measure. Next thing that I'm going to talk about is a, I bought digitally on Bandcamp uh, by a band called Manflesh. And it's a band by a friend of mine, Richard Grant. Cool dude, funny dude. He's acted in a handful of uh, these silly little comedy videos we've done in the past. Um, great musician, you know, very versatile. Uh, so he put this band together, Man Flesh, and I think they played one show this year. And then, of course, you know, that was sort of the end of that, playing live. But they put out this EP of some of their tracks and it's really good it's like rock distorted kind of guitars um it's really good worth checking out um i'll put the link down below their band camp and you can uh pick it up but it's uh it's really good if you like rock and like just rock and roll you know crunchy guitars or whatever definitely check them out man flesh next up we have aztec camera highland hard rain this is from 83 and the tune on here that I know, Oblivious. I remember hearing back, I don't think I heard it in 83, but I definitely heard it in like the mid 80s. I remember back then, I was always intrigued by, they did a cover of Van Halen's Jump. And I remember, it, I would always see it like the cassette, the e, it was like a EP, like four songs on it. It always had it. I remember always seeing it in the record store and wanting to pick it up, but just never, biting the bullet and grabbing it and finally one day i, I picked it up because i just wanted to hear that and back in the 80s it wasn't like you could just go on youtube and put aztec camera jump and hear it you know like back then you know there was no really other way to kind of dig that up and so i finally bit the bullet and bought the cassette and it's good but it's i think i remember somebody describe it as like they took like this pop rock song kind of upbeat, you know, and just turned it into like the most depressing <laughs> song in the world, like in a good way, I guess, you know, but um, it's kind of interesting to uh, check it out. Maybe I'll, if I, I'll dig it up on YouTube, assuming it's there and put the link below so you can check that out. I didn't really know too much uh, else by Aztec Camera. Yeah, again, you know, I just kind of was thinking of some records or songs that I liked in the past and never really dug too much into the band. And this one came up and had an opportunity to buy this on eBay for like $4 and I let it get away. And then when I was like thinking, ah, yeah, maybe I will pick that up. And I went back to look for anybody else selling it. And then everybody was selling it for way more. And I was like, ah, shoot, man, I blew my chance, man. And then I think I found it on Discogs or Declutter, actually. I think I found it on for like maybe six, six or $7. And I was like, ah, whatever, let me grab it. Uh, so it's a good record. I haven't delved too deep into this. I've heard a couple of things. I haven't had the chance just to just put it on and listen to the album, you know, start to finish. But, uh, but uh, you know, some of the tunes I've heard from it, I've kind of liked. So I'm kind of interested in checking more of this out. Aztec Camera, Highland, Hard Rain. If you watched my previous episode of Things I've Picked Up in 2020, you will have heard me talk about this band before. This is Dressy Bessie. Uh, like I mentioned on that episode, I had one record by them that I really liked. And then last year, like December, I picked up another CD, CD by them, and I really liked that as well. And then just decided to start, let me start grabbing all this other stuff they had. So um, these two I just added pretty recently to the collection. This is Holler and Stomp from 2000, what, eight? 2008. And then this is Little Music from 2003. This is like a compilation of singles they put out between 97 and 2002. Um, that was the one thing that I remember when I picked up their self-titled record. I, I knew that song and I heard it. I don't know what year that came out, but I heard that song a, f a couple of years later and assumed that it was like new and then was shocked to realize that, oh no, this came out a while ago. And, and same thing, like I was shocked when I started digging up some of their other records to realize how long they've been around, but uh, really good. Like I said in that other episode, it's kind of like, you know, pop sort of 60s kind of pop sort of sound to it. These two records, again, I really like 
I think I said it on this episode. If not, it was the last one. Like I've been listening to these CDs and I haven't really picked up on what the names of some of these songs are. So in this case, you know, I can't really say like, oh, I love this song or I love this song because I haven't figured out what the titles are necessarily yet. But uh, don't regret digging into the catalog of Dressy Bessie whatsoever. And they're playing, they've been playing like some shows on their Instagram uh, account and Facebook during this whole ordeal we're going through. So, uh, yeah, worth checking out. You know, I'll put the link below. Uh, worth checking out. Hear them just kind of jamming in there. Looks like they're kind of like basement studio rehearsal area or whatever it is. Cool. Cool band. Dressy Bessie. We've got Holler and Stomp and Little Music. Next up, we have another 2-4. The band is Camera Obscura. This is Under Achievers, Please Try Harder. And we have Biggest Bluest Hi-Fi. Uh, this one came out in, what, 2001? Under Achievers is 2003. Uh, first discovered Camera Obscura when I was watching this cool show that used to be on in New York area called New York Noise. Music video show, mid to later part of the 2000s. They played a lot of great music on there, introduced me to a lot of cool bands, including Camera Obscura. Uh, they had a tune called French Navy that New York Noise played the video of that kind of introduced me to the band. And I picked up one or two of their albums back then and really liked it. And then again, this year I was just thinking of Sort of like Dressy Bessie, like what other bands have I not really, that I liked, I haven't dug into like their catalog at all. And I just thought of Camera Obscura and just started picking up a couple more of their albums. And both of these are really good, sort of sticking with the game plan of their other, their other uh, records that I have. Kind of, you know, it's kind of that alternative, kind of dreamy pop kind of sound to it, you know, really good. I, I really like this band. Unfortunately, and I feel horrible not knowing what her name was. I, I think she played like keyboard in the band, uh, but she had passed away. I don't know. It sounds like maybe the band will continue uh, to some degree, but, uh, you know, kind of sad news to hear that. You know, I'm sure she was very young, way, way, way too young. Um, but anyways, check them out, Camera Obscura. And finally, one of my favorite bands of all time, The Muffs. This is whoop de doo that came out in 2014. I didn't have this one. I have all their other stuff. They just put out a new album called No Holiday last year. This is really good. I haven't gotten too deep into it, but you know, I mean, they're one of my favorite bands. Kim Shattuck, she was a great songwriter, great singer, had a very kind of um, unique uh, voice and presence and I've seen them live a handful of times and they always put on a great show and it was almost like going to almost like a comedy show too because they would joke around with each other especially her and the bass player Ronnie Barnett would throw these quips back and forth you know at each other and it was like I said it was almost like going to a comedy show too and it's just such a powerful band and so good and you know it's such a bummer because uh, you know, she passed away last fall and it came out of nowhere because she, she passed away from, uh, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease and kept it private. And so none of us really, none of us fans knew what was going on. And when you read that, heard the news, it just kind of completely bowled you over. It just came out of nowhere. And it was so sad. She was young and, you know, so depressing to kind of, know that you're never going to see them again and she was you know really cool and uh just super talented I, I love this band it sucks to think i'm not gonna see them live again actually last december i ran into ronnie barnett at a record store in california and it was i hated to be bringing her up because i didn't want to bum him out because i could only imagine what he was going through and he had also lost his mother right after kim passed away but, you know, I kind of felt like I had to talk to him, just get some things off my chest, you know, knowing it just made me feel good knowing that I could tell somebody who was so close to her what she meant to me and, you know, he as well, their band, you know, and how much they meant to me and how much joy they provided me and how much I loved their songs. 
you know, and he was very cool about it. You know, I didn't get a sense at all that he was like, uh, why does this guy have to be bringing this up today? You know, I'm having a good day. And he was really cool, you know, and, uh, you know, but it was so sad uh, that she passed away, but the muffs were great, you know, I and mean, just kind of like, kind of a rock, great rock band, kind of had a little punk sort of attitude to them, but I don't know that they would ever describe themselves necessarily as a punk band, but, uh, but definitely worth checking out. This is, this is one of their later albums, but, uh, but it's it, worth checking out. If you don't know the Muffs, I highly, highly suggest you kind of dig up some of their stuff and check it out. But a uh, great, great band. Love them. So that's it for the second episode of my 2020 Pickups Editions to the collection. I'll be doing these periodically as the years go by. Or I mean as the year goes by. <laughs> Hey, man, what, I don't know what the heck. I don't even know what day it is anymore, man. So anyways, subscribe, like the video. By all means, I would love to hear what you have to say about these records or any other records by them. Or if you're a Muffs fan, I'd love to hear from you uh, about them. And uh, by all means, stay cool. We'll see you next time. Later.